Hey, good morning, everybody. Hope you're having a great start your day. Just want you to know that here in the South Central Kentucky, the high today is only going to be 82. Uh, that means it'll be safe to go outside, safe to breathe the air. Uh, it'll, it'll, you know, we we can live today because it's only 82. If it's over 95, all of you folks are going to be outside in, in over 95 degree temperature a day. Your life might end. <laughs> oh, I- I find it I find it just so humorous. I heard some people just the other day at the library going back and forth about how the weather's changed and we better get ready for global warming and whole world's going to end and <laughs> and I <clears throat> I really did well. I kept myself from saying anything. So I thought I can re- I can I can log jam this worldview real quick with just a couple statements or a couple articles, but then they're not going to listen anyway. So I just sat and listened and laughed and snickered and. And uh, and said, Lord, help them, help them, help them. (laughs) If some of you know what I'm talking about, you just say, oh, Lord, help them, help them, help them when you hear people. And the reason I say those kind of things at times is because when you listen to what's going on in the world and you hear how people are just buying into it, hook, line, and sinker, um, maybe maybe for me it's hook, line, and snicker, but nonetheless, and not snicker bars either. Let's look at the news today, folks. All right, news story had this article, debanking spree. UK banks are closing more than a thousand accounts a day with little explanation. Now, this is basically a social credit score that says, hey, we don't like your politics. Hey, we don't like your position. Hey, we don't like your conservative values. Hey, you're a Christian, so get out of here. Um, This is happening all over the place. And then hotair.com had this article, new banking regulations could sink the economy. This has to do with the capital reserves and things like that. And uh, so be watching what the Federal Reserve does. Be watching what your congressmen do. Uh, be watching the decisions that, that, that they make about things here. Um, so just realize that things are getting different, 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 different. Uh, wow. Okay. Zero heads. Members of Congress visit site of Parkland School shooting in hopes of passing new gun control. Um, the gun, gun control is not the issue. It's dealing with the mental health issues. It's, it's dealing with the the insanity that some people are living in and, and walking in uh, based on some of the things that, that are being put into our bodies, based on the medications that some people are taking. Uh, hey, we still have yet to see the manifesto from the shooter in outside of Nashville, right? Now, here's a big article that's worth your time. Zero Hedge. Listen to this, folks. Heart scarring observed in children after they got something that they had to have to go to school or mandated by the government. Heart scarring. This is a study, a documented research. Uh, and Nancy Seraldo, who is on here, she's a retired cardiac care nurse. Uh, and, and there's a group of ladies in my church. And I, when I get an article like this, I send it to them. I can, it's, like, it's, our, it's our medical news network. Uh, it's kind of more like the it's the it's a, it's a group. We, every time we get an, an article gets sent out, it's, like, it's, it's the growling group. I guess I'd call it that. But nonetheless, heart scarring. So there's there there are young kids that are there are children that are getting these things, and then their hearts are scarred. And folks, you can't fix that. You can't fix that. And that just means more arrhythmia later on. So it's a sad day when you realize that grandma's doing things that they know better than to do, and they're not telling people and. And they're all going to, and these, these men and women will stand before God. The books will be read. And you hate to think, boy, I hope they get what they, what, what they got coming. But that's what justice is all about. And they will get what they've got coming because they lied to the nation. They lied to people. They lied to parents. And so I'm bothered by that. A uh, super popular doctor canceled by Chase Bank One social credit system is already here, folks. The first article I read today was about the UK banks just canceling a thousand, a thousand accounts a day and just saying, sorry, your money's no good here. Uh, it's already here. It's not coming. It's already here. Those things that they warned about, we've talked about, it's already here. All right. Now, listen, this is a UK Sun article, and I'm going to go actually to the article. OK, way forward, scientists working on fat loss pill, which makes you skinny. No matter how much junk food you eat, 
they make a major breakthrough in this. Now, did you hear this? Did you hear this? Scientists working on fat loss pill, which makes you skinny, no matter how much junk food you eat. In other words, here's a pill and you can just, you don't have to have any discipline at all. And that is, that is folks. Please understand what I'm about to say. That's the antichrist spirit. Hey, this will fix you. Take this mark, get this. Everything will be taken care of. Everything will be all right. Oh, take this pill. You don't have to worry about it. You can. You want to eat? A, you want to eat two two whole pies? Once not two slices, but two whole pies. Go right. In, in other words, this is the non-disciplinary approach to weight loss. And I look. Um, I had family members that struggled when my when my dad passed away. He was over four hundred pounds. I had a sister who died at six hundred pounds. I had a grandma who passed away. My dad's mom passed away at almost 400 pounds so in my family i understand heavy i understand morbid obesity okay and that's why you hardly i, I don't use, i don't use the word fat even taught my kids don't don't use that word fat because i was sensitive because i also realized that genetically in this body of mine uh there could be a very large person about to come out if i'm not careful and disciplined okay but that bothers me. That headline bothers me because it bothers me because basically take this pill and you can do anything you want. <clears throat> There's danger in that. Uh, there's one more article that I want to find here. I, I have a, I scroll through about, okay, 3,000 U.S. troops enter Gulf region in latest escalation with Iran. 3,000 U.S. troops. And this is probably the stuff you didn't hear in the news. And this comes from Zero Hedge. Uh, maybe one more. And I may, I may have said this one. Uh, oh no, yeah, yeah okay. <clears throat> campaign plane, campaign plane of presidential contender loses oxygen in midair. <laughs> uh, yeah, campaign plane of presidential contender loses oxygen in midair. <clears throat> now, all I got to say about that is that can't be good. <laughs> Uh, but you just have to wonder what in the world is going on. And there's another article on Zero Hedge worth your time. Dear America, rest up for what's coming when normies awake. Rest up for what's coming when normies awake. So, folks, look, <clears throat> we're seeing issues in banking. We're seeing issues in, in medical truth. Uh, we are seeing issues that go well beyond what we as Americans can do anything about. And I've got two words. But God. Never underestimate what God can do in the short or the long term. Because we, we have this we have this tendency in the church to underestimate God, what God can and will do. We underestimate what God can and will do. So I'm telling you what. Keep trusting him. Keep looking to him. Keep your faith and your trust in him. Don't take your eyes off of Jesus, folks. And there's going to be a whole lot of distractions and a whole lot of crazy things out there trying to get our attention and screaming to get our attention. And, and that's why that's why government is making so many mistakes right now, because we have people who don't know who God is, don't read the word, don't live their lives for Christ, trying to govern a nation of people that wants to uh, do what they want. And that is the spirit of Antichrist. So understand, folks, there's a whole lot of things that are happening, a whole lot of situations that are going on. So what's the point? Keep living your life for Jesus. Keep letting people around you see Christ at work in your life. And I wanted to focus on just one verse today. <clears throat> and that's Revelation 4.11. We've seen the four living creatures. We've seen the elders who took the crowns off and cast them at his feet. And now in verse 11 of chapter 4 of Revelation, it says simply this, Worthy are you. Worthy are you. They cast their crowns before the throne. The living creatures, the 24 elders, are all falling. John is seeing this incredible picture of worship. They've taken their crowns. These, these four living creatures are flying around. They're singing, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was, who is, and who is to come. And now they take their throne. They're, they take their, they, they, they come off their thrones. They're on their knees. They take their, their crowns off and they lay them at his feet. And they're singing, worthy, worthy, worthy. That word, worthy, is a word that I find myself saying so often during worship when I feel the presence of God. Sometimes just driving down the road, I'll just start saying, worthy, worthy, worthy are you, God. Worthy are you, our Lord and God, 
to receive glory and honor and power. Power. Every time I watch a presidential inauguration, and even though I was in, I was in, I was in London, actually in the Heathrow Airport, the day that King Jar, King Charles was uh, was was, uh, you know, taking the the rights to become the king. When you when you when you see those events, what you're seeing, what you're seeing, is the authority for the nation to lead the nation being given to that individual. They cast their crowns before the throne. They cast. They just, they didn't hand them. They just kind of threw them. They, they kept their distance. They basically said, Lord, we recognize that we're not even worthy to be in your presence. Worthy are you, our Lord and our God. Folks, don't forget to take the time every day. Worship is not just something designated for Sunday mornings when there's a worship team or someone playing a piano or an organ. Worship needs to be an every single day part of our life. Worthy are you, our Lord and God, to receive glory and honor and power. Nobody else but him. There is no other name under heaven by which we can, we, men can be saved. There's no other God in this universe. Buddha bows down. Muhammad bows down. And those men that aren't gods, but just men that are dead and buried, Bible says every knee will bow, every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Well, guess what? One day, you'll see Hitler there. You'll see every enemy that ever came against you. Every person that pushed back on you. You'll see those stubborn-hearted people who mocked you and ridiculed you and laughed at you because you went to church every Sunday. Or because you believed in some gods you couldn't see. Worthy are you, our Lord and God, to receive glory and honor and praise for you created all things. You see, part of this worship is we recognize him as creator God. Creator God. Creator God. And by your will, they existed and were created. When we understand and recognize that he is our creator. He is more than just king of kings and lord of lords. He is the absolute standard for everything that should happen on this earth. It is him who alone is worthy of praise and honor and glory. For you created all things. I'm sure that once we get to heaven that we will understand even that creative process. Because I want to see in the fabric of the universe... Like, you know, I want to see how it all came together. I want to see what happened in that 24-hour literal day. I want to see the spirit moving above the waters. I want to see those animals that God just speaks, and there they are. I want to see the colors of the grass and the colors of the sky. I want to be able to see what it must have looked like on the seventh day when God rested and just looked at his creation. Sometimes just seeing. I walked out last night to take the dogs out, and there was this incredible, incredibly beautiful sky, kind of like in the same area where I took the picture of the sun behind that one bush a, a couple months ago. It was, and I walked, looked at this, oh, man, Lord, you did some great job. That's great, Lord. You did a great job painting that sky for me. It was just a beautiful picture. The oranges and the pinks and a little bit, a little stream of red. And I thought about that, that scarlet thread of redemption that's through the entire Bible from Genesis to Revelation. Folks, do, don't not see. We can see God in everything around us. In everything about us. Not just in the sun, the skies, the moon. You see, they took their crowns off. <sighs> are you giving him worship every day? Are you, are, you, are, you, are you allowing yourself to be amazed at how God works and what, what, you, you, what you can see him do? Take the time. Take the time today. 
wherever you are on this planet, whether you're in Canada or Australia, United Kingdom, whether you're in Paducah, Kentucky, St. Louis, Missouri, wherever you are, take the time to worship Him today. To realize, to realize that He is worthy of our praise. I think a lot of believers have this idea that worship just happens on Sundays. You know, because, well, there's somebody playing a song, and, you're, and it's great to hear other people sing with you. When I, was, when I, I got saved when I was 15, I, I grew up with a wooded area behind my house. and used to ride motorcycles and bicycles back there, and, and even three-wheelers. <laughs> you know, those dangerous things, those three-wheelers. And, and I'll tell you what, I would, I would ride my bike back there. I learned to pray by walking in front of my house. We lived out in the country. And for about a quarter mile each way, I could just walk. And there'd be people's houses, you know, up on the hills and things. But I could just literally, literally, literally um, learn to pray that way. I could pray out loud. And I began to learn to worship out loud, too. And so I'd go back in the woods. And I would be, I, and I was learning some new worship songs and things. I hadn't been in church, you know, for a while. But nonetheless, here I get saved at 15. And I start singing songs that were singing in church. And there was one song, and some of you may know it. It was that song, Sweep Over My Soul. Sweep Over My Soul. And I grew up in an older church, but I'll tell you what, I love the depth of those songs. And I would, I would be back there just, I'd sing, not maybe as loud as I could, but I, 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 I helped get myself comfortable singing out loud. I mean, it's because I'm, you know, I'm a public speaker as a pastor, but... I'd go back in the woods and just sing. There was an area near some of the uh, some of the lake areas back there. I'd go and sit. And there was a rock I'd go and sit on and and just worship. I'd take my Bible back there. I mean, and I learned, I really learned that summer how to hear God's voice, how to just shut myself in. There was another another song, "Shut In with God in a Secret Place." But that sweep over my soul. Would just get, and I, I find myself still to this day singing that song. There's another doer, a newer worship song called Here in Your Presence. And I find myself singing that song. So I, I want to encourage you look, and this is not about how great a voice you have or if you have a voice that makes the pigs go running when they hear it. That, that, that doesn't matter. But I'll tell you what. Take the time every single day to worship him. Take the time to glorify him. There's going to be a whole lot of worship in heaven. That will be a lot of a lot of the makeup of what we do there. But make sure you're spending time worshiping him. Worshiping him. And sometimes even when you're when you're when you're hurting, when you're weary, when you're tired, when you're down. I encourage those of you that are baptized in the Spirit to even pray, to, to sing in the Spirit, because Paul encouraged us to do that. Paul said, I, you know, I pray in the understanding, I pray in the Spirit. So do that as well, and you'll find, you will find. And that's why sometimes in our church services, when I come to cross, I, just depending on what, what the sense of the presence in the room, I'll encourage people to sing in the Spirit. And man, it, there's, it changes the atmosphere. It literally changes the atmosphere. So, folks, let's just take some moments and do that. All right, let's worship him. Oh, God in heaven. Lord, we lift our hands and we worship you today. We open our, we, we open our eyes because we want to see you. We want to see you high and lifted up. We want to see you exalted and lifted up. And we want to be the ones that are doing it, Lord. Although we live in a world where many don't see you, we do. And help us to see you in a greater, deeper way than we ever have before. And may our hearts, may our hearts explode in worship, Lord. Help us determine that our hearts are going to worship you, no matter how bad it gets, no matter how hard it is around us, no matter what our bodies feel, no matter what we think, no matter no matter what's happening in our world, God, we will worship you, we will glorify you, we will exalt you. We're worthy are you, our Lord and our God, who was, who is, and who is to come. And we glorify the name of Jesus. We are asking that you would manifest your presence and your power. 
in our lives, in our hearts, and may our hearts be full of worship for you, Lord. And in those moments when we're weak and we're tired and we're weary, God, may we understand that there is there is presence when we worship. There is peace when we worship. There is encouragement when we worship. There is hope when we worship, Lord. Though he slay me, yet will I live. Lord, may we, may we take our worship of you to a deeper level, to a newer level, to a high, both a higher and a deeper level, God. May we see you in greater ways, Lord, as we enter our secret place and we and we just begin to, to worship and glorify you. May we, may we feel the presence of God in deeper ways. And I'm asking you more as I pray that when we walk into a room, the atmosphere will change because we have been in your presence. It's not us that will change the atmosphere. It is you in us. So Holy Spirit, let there be an anointing. Let there be an incredible passion and heart to worship you. And oh God, may we see you. May we see you high and lifted up, Lord. High and lifted up. May we see you like Isaiah did. Lord, may we see you like, 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 like Moses did on the mountain when there was fire and lightning and thunder and the cloud of your presence. Lord, I think of Solomon when they dedicated the temple and your presence came down and the glory of God came down. Let the glory of God come down around us as we worship you. As we live in a place of exalting you and glorifying your name. And the presence that comes with it, Lord, may it be around us to the point that others feel, sense, and recognize. Yeah, we're praying for that cloud of glory to come and settle on us. Come and settle on us, Lord. Help us to see your face, hear your voice. May we sit here, may we be here, may we walk here. May we stand here in your presence <clears throat> where we are undone. Here in your presence, Lord. May you manifest yourself in us. And that's our prayer today. And that's our praise today. Let me glorify the name of Jesus. Thank you for letting your presence be felt in our lives. We give you glory and honor and praise for it, Jesus, in your name. Amen. Folks, take the time. Take the time, take the time, take the time to worship him. Take the time to glorify him. Take the time to lift those hands. Take the time to lift your voice. And just worship him. Hey, today at noon, be back on. Uh, we're going to talk about just the benefits of praying in the spirit of praying in tongues. And, uh, and I just want it to be real practical, which is why it's called practical prayer of the spirit. Uh, I just want to talk about what, what that does uh, in your mind over time. What that does. Uh, in just in your life and your normal daily life, uh, how speaking in tongues can make an incredible difference. So appreciate you folks being on here today. Hope you have a great rest today and hope to see some of you noon. So God bless folks and don't forget to take time to worship all throughout the day. God bless. <laughs>